This is Y376 International Political Economy, September 9, 2008. What is an exchange rate? An exchange rate is the price of a currency expressed in terms of other currencies or gold. What does the international monetary system have to do? It has to assure currency convertibility. It has to maintain sufficient availability of currencies for trading and capital flows, also called liquidity. It has to maximize stability of exchange rates given change in demand and supply. And it has to allow balance of balances of payments to equilibrate over time via changes in exchange rates. The balance of trade is exports minus imports. If exports exceed imports, then we have a balance of trade surplus. If imports exceed exports, we have a balance of trade deficit. The balance of payments is the trade balance minus the net financial flows. The budgetary balance, which is distinct from the balance of trade and the balance of payments, has to do with government revenues and government spending. If government revenues minus government expenditures uh, produce a positive result, you have a budget surplus. That is, you're, you're getting in more money than you're spending. If your government revenues are less than your government expenditures, then you have a budget deficit. The balance of trade in goods and services between 1991 and 2005 in the United States were, went from a relatively modest $30, $40 billion in 1991 to over $700 billion in deficit. The, Ju the U.S. balance of payments deficit has also grown during that same period of time, and generally the balance of trade and the balance of pa uh, payments move in the same direction. Uh, this sh chart shows the top five industrial countries, France, Germany, Japan, the U.K., and the U.S. As you can see, uh, two countries have consistently been in surplus, Germany and Japan, and the United States has consistently been in deficit and that deficit has grown as has the surplus. When trade or balance payments deficits or surpluses persist over a relatively long period of time that's called a structural imbalance. If a country has a structural deficit it needs to import or more import less rather and export more. Uh, also if a country has a structural uh, surplus it needs to import more and export less. Um, there's more pressure on a structural deficit in many ways than on a structural surplus. Um, deficit countries have to finance their deficit by borrowing funds and at a certain point it becomes more difficult to do that. The United States, uh, the dollar is a key currency. A key currency is used in international trade settlement or as a reference currency in settling exchange rates, setting exchange rates, sorry. The current key currency is the US dollar. Central banks tend to hold this currency in their reserves in case of emergencies. The dollar has been the primary uh, currency held in other countries' uh, foreign currency holdings. As you can see, in 1978, it was almost 80%. Uh, it's declined somewhat over the past two decades. And uh, in 2007, it actually went up a little. Um, the U.S. dollar declines relative to the Deutsche Mark and the yen through the 1990s, and then the euro basically became the key alternative to the dollar uh, after 2001. A uh, key currency country does not have to worry as much as others about dealing with structural deficits. Uh, its currency is needed for settling international transactions and need, needed to be held outside the country in the form of uh, reserve deposits. A key, key currency country is often criticized for exporting its inflation to other countries by keeping domestic demand high um, during a period of structural deficits uh, and uh, Generally, it can increase its money supply with having, without having to worry as much about generating inflationary pressures. Um, the structural surplus countries, Germany and Japan, uh, were 
basically uh, stubborn about upwardly revaluing their currencies uh, under the original Bretton Woods system. Uh, and uh, they did this because uh, they saw benefit from continuing to export it at high rates uh, because their growth had become dependent on their export performance. Uh, in 1971, the U.S. government decided to do something about this in a fairly radical way. Uh, in August 1971, it was reported that the U.S. had a small deficit, which was the first uh, reported deficit for many years. Uh, President Nixon and his Treasury Secretary John Conley agreed to uh, release the dollar from being tied to gold at $35 per ounce. Uh, to impose an import surcharge of 10% on all imports and to withdraw that surcharge only if surplus countries, which of course meant Germany and Japan, agreed to revalue their currencies. Uh, this pressure was uh, produced a lot of uh, friction in the, uh, the big industrial countries and uh, a series of meetings resulted finally in an agreement to do precisely what the U.S. wanted at the Smithsonian Institution in 1972. So you see a picture of the building there below, a picture of President Nixon to the left, and uh, John Connolly uh, on the left-hand side of the photo uh, in the ill-fated limousine from uh, the assassination of Kennedy in 1963.